I am a longtime fan of Patrick Brown's art and recently I had the opportunity to chat with him about his work, why drawing fan art changed everything for him and how he transitioned from being a graphic designer to a full-time digital artist working for Marvel. Hey Patrick, nice to have you on Yes, I'm a Designer. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. We had a lot of positive feedback from our uh, followers, our viewers. They really loved your work in a previous video that we shared. Uh, you must have worked a lot on that piece uh, with all the game characters. How long did it take to finish that piece? Oh, that it took me four years uh, overall. So that that's not flat out working. It's it's more um, bits were spaced out mainly because of work um, was quite full on. But four years of just kind of coming back to it and chipping away, um, yeah, it took a long time. It was a lot of fun though. I was always drawn to, back to it. Um, I really bit off more than I could chew with that picture. I could definitely say, but uh, I'm glad I did. <laughs> You have on your screen right now another fan art. Uh, can you just show us a bit how what it is that you're working on currently? No problem. Yeah, so currently I'm working on a piece that is called, uh, well, it's Geralt from The Witcher. And I really wanted to do a piece where he is going up against Hellboy, um, mainly because... Um, uh, I really like the art style of um, Mike, uh, sorry, it's Magnola, I think it is. I should really know that by now. But yeah, I uh, really wanted to uh, just do a, a kind of a clash piece here because he actually does the comics for Hellboy and he also does some Witcher comics as well and they're both in the same kind of style. And uh, I just thought it'd be a great clash. Um, it was actually a, an idea from one of my best mates. He really gave me the idea. I just wanted to mention that you obviously share your work on Patreon and that uh, you usually share the stages of the work. I've seen the sketch version of this already, which you shared. And um, and I'm, I'm guessing you will probably uh, share like a time lapse as well at the end, um, like, you, like you've done with Last of Us Part Two. Um, which was your previous fan art? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love doing those things. It's really good, really fun. I just think it gives a bit more insight into how much goes on with it all. And uh, yeah, that's no, good. I can see that you're actually working in Clip Studio Paint Pro. Um, do you still use Photoshop or you, you now mainly work in this application? I do. Um, I actually mostly work with, well, it's actually 50 50. Photoshop. I start with um, in the setup and composition, um, especially when I'm sketching. I'll, I'll do all my rough sketching in Photoshop, sometimes in a bit of this, but I jump between both programs. Uh, but when it comes to the later half where it's more, everything kind of needs to be more polished and sharper, um, Clip Studio Paint, you just can't go wrong. It's, it's super crisp and clear and uh, the brush strokes are just perfect. Um, where Photoshop's brushes are a little bit more choppy, I find. So um, these ones are just super smooth. So I prefer to use Clip Studio for all that stuff. Before we get deeper into any uh, particular questions, uh, do you mind just uh, telling us a little bit about your background, how you ended up being an, a digital artist and uh, where are you based and uh, what was really like the defining moment in your career? Yeah, so I'm an Australian artist. Um, I live in Tasmania uh, in, a, in a city called Launceston. And uh, yeah, I, I've been drawing all my life, um, mostly. So I've just, it's just been a real passion of mine. I'm a big video game guy. I, I love TV shows and I'm really big on movies. So I had a lot of material that I just wanted to draw. You know, I, I just built up a gallery on deviant art and I just kept adding to it and adding to it over the years. And, um, I didn't even realize it, but it started to build a following over time. And um, that just helped drive me more and give me a boost. I, I really enjoyed just doing that. I did a piece of fan art for Guardians of the Galaxy because I really, really enjoyed the movie. I loved it. So I just did a piece on that, put it in my gallery and I left it. 
And I just thought, oh, yeah. And then the it wasn't long after, and I got an email from, from Marvel, actually. They, they uh, were offering me a job, and uh, I jumped at the chance. I just... I, I was over the moon, happy. I couldn't couldn't believe it, and uh, yeah, they offered me a lot of lot of work, uh, steady work that would just keep coming. So I did uh, eventually decide to quit my graphic design job and be a full time artist. So that was a really scary moment for me because leaving security of a full time job to go into the unknown, you know, um, was scary. But I'm really glad I did it, and I've been in been working from home now with Marvel for about six years. So uh, it's been great. Yeah, everything's been just solid. A lot of lot of work, projects, and I never get bored of it. It's, it's a dream. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. That's amazing. And it's really exciting to hear from, from you and your background that you started off as a graphic designer, but now you transitioned into a full-time digital artist. Do you have tips on uh, how to improve uh, drawing skills if someone is just starting out or just wants to get better. Can you think of anything particular that help you? Oh, definitely. Um, I think one of the main things to do is to make sure that um, you have a passion or something to focus on that's going to keep you motivated. That's probably the biggest, most important thing. You want to have some fun with it. You want to. You want something that's going to keep you glued to it, not something that you're you're going to drift from because it's boring or you just don't have the motivation there. So, it's it's really good to make it fun and exciting in a way. I mean, me as an artist, I, I usually get uh, really excited about doing something, especially when I'm doing fan art. I, that was really good practice because if I'd just finished playing a certain video game like The Last of Us or something like that, and it's just really got me hyped and I'm in the zone, you know. That energy will, I will want to put that into some art on the screen in my free time or something, you know, just. So I use that to my advantage and I actually, I think it helps a lot. It can last like a good week or a couple of weeks while I'm actually still really hyped about this game or if I'm currently playing it at the same time. Uh, I use that to kind of, get the piece going, you know, get the picture moving to stay interested. I make sure that whatever's happening in the picture is a lot more exciting. So there's a lot of movement or if uh, it's quite dramatic um, rather than having something that's a bit more still. If someone's just standing there, I kind of get a bit bored with that. But um, I like to always have an intense action pose, something interesting. Doing fan art, like I said, it can keep you interested, but um, – when you're done with it, it's also something that someone else is really going to love straight away, especially if it's something that they like that has been drawn. You get inspired by other artists and then you just, again, continue the, the thread and you continue inspiring with your work. So that's, that's a lovely thing about art and uh, the community in, in art that people really, uh, first of all, learn from each other, but also stay inspired by each other's work. Do you, since you talked about sketching, that's another thing that a lot of people ask. Um, what's what's the right way of doing sketching? Is it is it uh, important to have confident lines, or is it okay to draw uh, loosely and then draw over it a couple of times? Without a good sketch, a good start, it's hard to create good art. So it's it's a critical and crucial part of the workflow. Yeah, Photoshop's just kind of nice for roughs and then usually like really hard to see whatever I was drawing here but you know I was going to have his waist down here and probably a leg kind of up here and blah 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 but um then I would fade that back you know right back and then I would probably do another layer and start cleaning up over the top of this with with more tighter lines and I think it's okay to use digital for sketching um a lot of people still do traditional sketches on paper with pencils and stuff, but I think I, I used to do that, but now I'm kind of drawn to doing all of my stuff in uh, digitally, sorry, sketching. So I just think it's a little bit more freeing and I love to be able to do control Z obviously and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's just, yeah, 
a lot easier and it's a little bit more efficient, I would say, in a way. Yeah, and I just kind of keep building on my rough sketch as I go until I've got something that's a bit more solid and clean and then I'll get that sketch and fade it all back and start doing ink work over the top kind of thing. So that's that's kind of how I would do it in a way, but yeah. So it's it's pretty much like three stages. The first one is the very rough sketch which really just gets, yeah, gets can the rough as you want. proportions and the, the, uh, the dynamic pose in place. But then comes this refinement stage where you add the details. And then the, the next time when you would do the, the ink uh, stage is when you really refine everything and you create these perfect outlines um, that we've seen in the previous work with Witcher and Hellboy. I just kind of keep building on my sketches and just keep going and going and going and then yeah, eventually they will end up a lot cleaner. And I think that's just, I mean, I've always been a bit of a perfectionist. So I don't like messy. I usually just keep tightening it up as much as I can. That's also an important thing that people don't necessarily realize that even professional artists, they they constantly make mistakes. Like we can see that you undo many lines. So you probably end up every second line you draw, you remove. And since you started with that uh, Spider-Man, if you just don't mind showing me, how would you do the inking? If you just on the head, those details that you've created, like with the eyes, for, for instance. I'll show you, I'll just save this and then I'll transfer it over. So I'll just call it Spidey, just save it on my desktop. And then I'll transfer this one over into Clip Studio Paint. I'll start doing the inks in here because it's so much crisper and cleaner. So I'll fade that back a bit and add a new layer and then I'll get my sharp pens out um, up here and make sure I've got a black. And then I'll start doing the ink work over this. And you can see how I'm, I'm it's okay to kind of uh, do the undo a fair few times actually until I'm happy with that one stroke. Like I said, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I literally look at every single stroke that I make and I make sure that it's smooth enough or, you know, has a bit more motion in it and it, it just looks nice and clean. That's just what I like to do. And then sometimes I'll do this. I'll do a transform if I want to just quickly adjust that line so it's not so, his head's not so big. And this is still this is still pixels, so it almost looks like a vector line that you create here. But this is still raster based, right? Yeah, that's right. I can actually make it um, vector as well if I wanted to, which is a really cool feature in this program. You convert the layer, I think, to vector. So everything that you draw comes out as a vector, a vector line. So you can technically put it into Illustrator and start adjusting each line if, if you needed to, uh, things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And when I get to the eyes, I'll, I'll usually bump the size up of my brush and start going over the eyes until I'm really happy with the result. That previous piece we've seen, the, the Hellboy and Witcher, where you already have done the inking, how long do you think it took to get to that point where uh, you had the ink stage ready. So before coloring and shading. It would take a day, I would say. So I, I would do from complete sketch to fully black inks would be by the end of the day, I would say. So I could do fully inked Witcher and same with Hellboy in the one day. And then the coloring and shading, would that take another full day or two separate days? Overall, it would take a week. Like, like the ink work would be one day and then the rest of the week would probably be all the rendering and the coloring and all that until it looks complete. If I was working on it flat out, I would say. So that Last of Us picture that I did recently, that I probably completed that whole thing in two weeks total, I would say. All right. Well, thank you so much, Patrick, for uh, sharing 
all this uh, with us and uh, it was great to talk to you and I wish you all the best with everything and uh, we are looking forward to seeing all the cool fan art that you're working on. So whoever is interested, once again, the link is in the description below for Patrick's uh, website, but also his Patreon, where you can support him and you can uh, get the layered files as well from him to really study the way he works and uh, also sometimes the time lapses that he's sharing there. So once again, thank you so much, Patrick, for your time and all the best for you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.